What do you do when other conditions get in the way of your lower back pain rehab? In this video, we're gonna talk specifically about conditions that affect the lower body. So we're talking about those hips, we're talking about those knees, we're talking about those ankles, them getting in the way of your back pain rehab, and we're gonna cover a few areas that hopefully are really gonna help you in this video. So we're gonna kick the video off with talking a little bit about why it is relevant. Uh, first and foremost, we've gotta help, help you understand why these areas are relevant. And then, as with all of our videos, we're looking to make sure that we can give you guys help, give you guys support inside this video. So we're gonna cover a few more practical things that you can do. And bear in mind and consider when moving forwards, if maybe your knees, your hips, your ankles are just a little bit niggly as you're trying to fix your lower back, because there's nothing worse than you're making good progress with your lower back rehab, and all of a sudden the knee or the ankle or the hip starts to become a problem. With that being said, if you do find these videos helpful, remember to give us a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss these videos. And now that's out the way, let's get straight into the video. So firstly, let's consider the lower back in itself. The lower back interacts through the hips, the knees and the ankles with the ground. And we need to have effective force transference through these joints in order for our lower back to be safe and functional and us as a human being functional in society. If we start to have issues with our knees, with our ankles and with our hips, that's going to have a knock on impact in the lower back. Maybe our ankle collapses in, which causes our knee to roll into the inside, which creates a bit of a torsion through the hips. And now we're pulling a little bit on the sacroiliac joint and our lower back is instead of getting forces coming up through and into the spine in a nice symmetrical manner, it's got more pressure driving in through the one sacroiliac into the lumbar spine than through the other. And this can create issues in of itself. To give you a little bit of a visual in the lower back, we've got force coming up through the two hip sockets that are here and here, coming through the sacroiliac joints, these big broad joints, and straight into the lower back. Now, if let's suppose my left ankle starts dropping in, that affects the height of the leg. So that means that this side is gonna drop down a little bit, all of a sudden creating a little bit of an imbalance at the level of the pelvis, and that might be temporary. It might be something that's short-lived. Maybe we've got a bit of an ankle sprain or we've gone over on our ankle and that's dropped in. So we've got that little drop there. Maybe we're dropping in and the knee's rolling in as well. And that's creating a little bit of buckling at the knee. Again, that's gonna drop down here. And we can see how these small changes, and they are small changes. We're talking about a couple mil. But as they're there for an extended period of time, it really starts to affect the mechanics of this area. And why are we talking about this? Well, in a lot of cases, what we find when we start doing back rehab is maybe we can't even squat down halfway effectively because our hips and knees aren't working well. And in actual fact, it's very, very common especially in those cases, which is the vast majority where it's not been a car accident. You haven't been in a car accident and all of a sudden you've had back pain and never had any problems before. Those are the rarity. Most cases of lower back issues, it creeps up on us. And it's a relatively minor uh, trigger event that causes the lower back pain. It might be putting the socks on, it might be maybe lifting your child. Well, you've lifted your child God knows how many times, but it's that one time. But it's often this cumulative effect. And what we find is that the dysfunctions, the lack of muscle strength, the lack of normal movement, the poor quality of the joints in the hips, knees and ankles is something that far precedes the lower back, but we work around it. That ankle drops in, so we kind of twist around and we carry on. Maybe it was sore a couple of years ago, but we got over it pretty quick and we just carried on because we walk and move differently. And you'll see people doing this. Maybe later today, members of your family, friends, people in the office, you'll see them getting up and down out of the chair and you notice, hmm, they don't bend with their knees. They don't squat into the chair. They round their back and kind of fall into the thing. And if you haven't already, definitely check out the most recent video that we did, on, or one of the recent videos we did, on getting in and out of a chair and some tips and things to consider for that. Probably a link up here or a link in the description or you can just search it on our website. But if we paint the picture with each of these specific joints, we've, we've covered the ankle already and how that rolling in of the ankle, that spraining of the ankle, can cause us maybe to lean on one of the other legs a little bit more to take load off. And because quite often with things like ankles and little knee strains, because they're relatively minor and the pain goes relatively quickly, we take a couple of painkillers, a couple of days, they heal quite quick. We don't necessarily go through the appropriate rehab. How many times have you, when you've sprained your ankle or gone over on your ankle, actually gone through some proper rehab to rehabilitate the connection between your brain and those ligaments? Quite often, it's very, very few and far between the people that actually do that. And therefore, we start to get these little habits, putting more pressure through one side than the other, just shying away from using that particular range of motion or using that limb in the same way we do the other limb. And that starts to feed in a little bit of asymmetry. If we take the example of the knee, we get a little bit of retropatellar arthritis. That's a little bit of generation behind the kneecap. And this is hugely common. A lot of people are affected by that. Part of the reason is gonna be if we get a little bit of tightness in our quads 
and we sit all day, we're actually pulling that kneecap straight onto the femoral condyles, which is basically your thigh bone, pulling onto there all day, and it doesn't get the appropriate nutrition it needs, and that starts to create a bit of wear. So now what we find is as we go through the knee, through certain ranges of motion, we catch it, and it gets quite a sharp pain actually if you, if you catch it just right. So we start shying away from bending our knees as much. Now what are the consequences of that? The consequences of that are the knees as a general unit get less use. But not only that, the hips get less use as well. And as those joints are getting less use, they're going through their range of motion less frequently, or their full range of motion. When was the last time your knee joint actually closed like an elbow all the way to here? When was the last time you did that? Let alone, when was the last time you did that with load going through it? Because it is designed to be able to do that. Now we see this when people start their back pain rehab. Even doing a simple lunge stretch, that is putting a little bit, you're kneeling down on the floor, back leg going back, front leg is supporting you, and the knee is at around about 90 degrees. Sometimes even that position, you're not even fully weight bearing on that front knee because you're stretching the leg that's behind you. That puts enough pressure through that knee to cause a bit of discomfort. And that's not normal. That really shows that we haven't been using these joints properly or effectively. And this really adds back in to what I was saying earlier about these joint issues, these lower body joint issues often preceding the lower back and they maybe sometimes start to come back to the surface when we start doing a bit more direct rehab. And the reason for that is the joint quality is reduced. Over time, not being used, that knee not going through its appropriate range of motion, we start to get degeneration. We start to limit that range of motion that we can go through. And therefore, as we start to work towards increasing that again, we start to become aware of those ranges of motion that we have not used in a long period of time. The muscles are weaker because they have not been through those ranges of motion in a long period of time. And that creates challenges that we don't want to shy away from. We want to be aware of those challenges, aware that's normal, and aware that's something that we want to work against and work and lean into to try and make some real change. Just finishing up with the knees though, they are such a common one. And so many people when they sit down don't use their knees appropriately and think how many times we're getting up and sitting down every day. They're not moving those knees through the appropriate range of motion. And coupled with the ankle dysfunction, their knees are so commonly just falling in as they do any sort of squatting range of motion. And that creates inappropriate wear on those joints and ultimately leads them to have more pain, which leads to less use, which leads to more degenerative change, which leads to weakening of the muscles even further. We can see how this has an impact. So now if we think about the knees being problematic, and I mentioned a moment ago about that having an impact on the hips, because the hips will go through lesser ranges of motion and the hip muscles will also be affected. We're starting to see a disuse chain or a disuse theme coming through here. What's one of the big things we talk about when it comes to rehabbing your lower back is a lack of strength being there, a lack of strength being able to protect the lower back. And if we've got one limb over the other, because it normally does start out in one limb rather than both, we can really start to see how we're starting to get lack of muscle strength and tone on the one side, maybe relative to the other, and how this is something that really starts to be revealed when we start to do proper objective rehabilitation. We're like, oh gosh, my left leg really isn't as strong as my right, or I really struggle when I do a lunge on my left leg versus my right leg, or when I squat, my left leg is so much more wobbly than my right, or I can see I shift off to one side when I'm doing some of those squats or other exercises. It really starts to get revealed. And if we talk about the hips themselves, one of the big muscles that really affects the hips is gonna be that glute max or just the glutes in general, responsible for this whole area and stabilizing this hip joint and providing power and also working synergistically with the muscles of the lower back and the core to provide stability to our lumbar spine. We tend to find that those muscles become wasted and wasted and wasted and we, because we're just not using them. One of the common ranges of motion that gets diminished as we start to get hip issues is the extension, the squeezing back, the opening out of that hip joint as we would do in a standing position. And it's those glute muscles that are really gonna help open that hip out to its full extended position, but we stop doing that. We start slightly leaning forwards a little bit. We start slightly pivoting forwards, rounding our lower back at the same time and developing these bad habits. So before we go any further, we've been talking about general injuries. And later on in this video, we will touch briefly on things like replacements of particularly hips and knees. But for the time being, hopefully by covering those areas, and, and yes, we start this out as a back pain video, but you're starting to see how certain issues that will have likely plagued or bothered those joints over the course of the years are starting to bring up problems that are problems that we need to overcome when it comes to dealing with our lower back pain. 
And by addressing those problems, we're both going to help the lower back on the one hand, evening out those muscle imbalances that have developed over the years, evening out those movement patterns that have developed over the years that are contributing to joint pain and irritation of those joints. We're also gonna help the lower back at the same time. So both areas get a help simultaneously. So what are some of the principles that can really help you here? Number one, we want to actually understand that these joints and their appropriate function play a vital role in your lower back's health. It's no good having poor knee mechanics if our lower, for our lower back's sake because we're not going to be able to move effectively. And the good thing about a lower back program, a specific lower back program, is that it will be addressing the interaction between your lower back and the ground via the limbs. You're going to be learning things like squats, things like lunges, etc., with correct technique, and we'll touch on that in a moment. But, so, but the process of going through that rehab, you're going to not only identify these issues in the limbs, you're going to be able to rectify them simultaneously by learning those exercises correctly. Sometimes people can get bogged down in the, de the muciae of detail. We're doing knee extensions, we're doing knee curls, and all these other sorts of peculiar activities. But actually just learning, using videos, watching your form, reflecting on it, getting a bit of support, to do things like squats effectively is so, so very important. And that's part of back rehab, but that's also part of knee rehab. It's gonna help us, it's also part of hip rehab, it's also part of ankle rehab, because those areas can go wrong when we're doing that simple activity. And you think, oh, well, what's a squat, what's a squat? You squat so many times, as we've already mentioned on a daily basis, and that's quite often a source of major irritation. People will say, oh, I'm doing the, the squats maybe in part of the program, or I'm doing the lunges, and it bothers my knee. Immediately, the first thing I think of is, you've only just noticed that? This is the first time. Think about how many times you do a lunge when you go up and down the stairs every day, maybe at work, in the office, in the house. How many times you're going up a step, doing a lunge, and probably doing it inappropriately. And then you see a video and the knee's going in, you think, gosh, how many times a day is that happening outside of the exercises? Let's use these exercises specifically to really work on that technique. And that brings me to one of the core principles, the core benefits, is that the principles that you would learn in the Back and Shape program of addressing technique first, get your technique right, and then addressing strengthening improvements is so, so very important. All too often, people will go in and they'll end up injuring themselves going into a class, maybe a hit class, or maybe a circuit class. Oh, we've got a new exercise. We're gonna do jumping lunges or something like that. And they don't have the technique there, but they're going in half leather and the knees just buckling, buckling, buckling each time. But we're just going through it because we've got the adrenaline running. And then all of a sudden we have knee trouble. It's something that happens time and time again. It may not be knee trouble that triggered it. It may be back trouble. It may be ankle trouble. It may be hip trouble, but these things are all related. So if we bring it back, to working on a rehab and what happens when these particularly hip, knee and ankle issues crop up, maybe during the program or maybe they happen at the same time. Maybe you started the program and you had that knee problem and you had that lower back problem. One of the confusions is obviously that some lower back issues refer pain down to those limbs, but other issues are that there are just actual joint mechanic issues that are present in those specific joints, knee, hip and ankle uh, being, being the examples we're talking about here. And actually working through diligently to reveal those problems and then address them. Maybe it's a specific back exercise that challenges you. Working to address why that is challenging you and make changes is going to be really, really vitally important in your progress, not only for the back, but you'll find that actually if you address those things properly, you're gonna find your back does better and those knees, hips and ankles will do better as well. So one of the other really important things is Sometimes when you don't know everything, you, there's an air of uncertainty around things. We've all been there with, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, am I doing it wrong? I don't know. And that's one of the benefits of having a support network where you can reach out to people and ask. I used the example earlier of the lunge stretch, the simplest possible lunge stretch. But even that can sometimes be a challenge for people. And that's not to shy away from that. If we shy away from doing that lunge stretch in that particular position, are we ever, because it's causing the pain I mentioned earlier, the, the front leg loading and the knee at that joint is causing pain. We're basically saying, I'm never going to be able to bend my knee to 90 degrees and put load through it. And that's a real problem because that will have impacts on all sorts of things. And there's no reason that it really needs to be the case. It just sometimes takes time. And if we think about how long some of these things have been degrading over time, we have muscle issues, we have ligament issues, we have joint strength issues that need to be addressed and those take time to rehab once you start actually addressing them. But having that expert guidance, having that support network means that we can say, hey, why don't you do it on the side of the bed? Because if you do it on the side of the bed, if you do that, that hip flexor stretch on the side of the bed, your knee joint, instead of being like that, is like that. Now it's in a stronger, more stable position. So for the time being, we can work around it we can get, still get a stretch through the hip flexor, we can still do that stretch effectively without irritating the knee unnecessarily, but we recognize that there is an importance that we must address 
the competence of that knee. And we're going to do that in other parts of the program when we're doing strengthening. So with any program, you've obviously got the fundamentals, but we talk about all sorts of different variations. Being creative, using shadowing to start with, to help you learn an exercise, using half reps, using quarter reps, using just starting position reps. All these sorts of tools can help us get into it because the number one thing that you need to bear in mind is if you've got a knee, a hip, an ankle problem, maybe it's gonna go on to the point of us having surgery. Maybe that's a prospect, maybe that's something that's necessary, maybe that's something that's indicated. You've spoken to your surgeon and they're, they're there saying, hey, look, this thing is really bad. It would be easier if we just go and get some, get some, some replacement done and you can start again from scratch. Sometimes that is necessary. But the great thing about this is that you can work from that point up until that operation to, yes, and I know, I know it's difficult, because it, you're working with pain. There's gonna be pain in that knee, that hip, that ankle. But you can work to at least get those muscles in the best possible condition, because as I mentioned probably about 15 times in this video, those tissues are not gonna be as good as they otherwise could be. And you're gonna get a fresh new joint. But the soft tissues are not fresh. They are still yours. And if before that op, we can make some significant improvement in the quality of those tissues, you're gonna find that after the op, you already know what you're doing. You've already been through the, 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 the learning you're gonna have maybe slightly different joint architecture. So there's gonna be a little requirement for adaptation, but because you practiced before, you're more plastic, you're more able to soak that, that new adaptation up like a sponge. And you've got that skill base there that you can draw on immediately after you've, you've had the operation, obviously with appropriate timeframes guided by your surgeon being considered. But you'll find that that work pre-op is going to be tremendously helpful post-op. You're gonna have a better recovery. You're gonna be able to move through those phases of recovery after and actually really embrace that new joint and be able to have it as a fresh start, if you will, where you can start moving properly again with the new bony architecture. Now we're not saying here, please, we're not saying that you ha have to have surgery, but we recognize that there is a small minority of people that will have to, and we wanna be helpful to those guys. Hopefully if you do your work well, the real positive side of things here is let's say your joint isn't that bad and someone said, hey, you might wanna have surgery some time down the line. The great thing about this is if you've got a more minor degenerative change or minor damage to those joints, there's a whole host of people, the majority, that have maybe had, hey, some point you're gonna to have to have that further down the line, but not just yet, that can do the work to rehabilitate, to learn the correct movement patterns, to restore some of the range of motion to that joint, to start to strengthen up those joints. And all of a sudden they go, hey, don't feel like I need that anymore. I'm better. My knee pain's gone away. My head pain's gone away. My ankle pain's gone away. We've seen too many people with objectively very, very, very bad joints go through that process and come to that conclusion, hey, I don't need that anymore. I don't feel like I need that. So we wanna provide support for you guys, which is the vast majority, but also that little bit of support for the small minority that do end up having these sorts of procedures. Because the, the general advice, it's win-win for both. You work hard on your prehab, your prehabilitation, and do the work on those joints, it's gonna have a positive impact on your back and you might not have to have surgery. And if you do have to have surgery, you're in a better position to go into the operation and you're in a better position to come out of the operation. So the real core message of this video is that if you've got other joint issues, you've got hips, you've got knees, you've got ankles that are bothering you, and they're getting in the way of your back pain rehab, follow through the process. Engage with support that's there to help you with modifications, with adjustments, with feedback on your technique. We mention it all the time, but we don't get as much people taking us up on it. There's comments in here. Use the comment section below. If you're in the groups that we have, then you can post in there, post your videos, get feedback. That's very important. And then follow through those principles. Technique first, and then intensity to really build the strength. And you'll find that in most cases, you can work on both improving the quality of those hips, knees and ankles, whilst improving the lower back, rather than falling into the trap of getting very, very frustrated and flustered that your lower back was doing so well and now the knee, hip and ankle are getting in the way of your progress and you're worried about falling back and having a relapse from the lower back point of view. As with these videos where we cover a quite a broad ranging topic, there are naturally gonna be questions to crop up. We have a comment section. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on Facebook, it's there for a reason. Use it below, ask questions, we're there to help. And you'll see from the comment sections, we reply to those questions, we try to help you as best we can. And if you're in our groups, we've mentioned videos, you can post videos in there too. Those are there to help you get the best feedback you can possibly get. Because there are nuanced cases for every individual. There are little adjustments, little tweaks for each individual that need to be made and can be made through getting feedback. Remember, 
There's probably gonna be a link up here or down here to the phase one program, which is free to join. That's gonna help you get started resolving your back pain. And if you're watching us on YouTube, remember hit that subscribe button. If you find these videos helpful, we release new videos every single week and they're there to help you. And one of the interesting videos that you might find is part of our new home activities sequence. We mentioned the sitting one earlier. You can check that out on the YouTube channel and on our website. Until next time, thanks for watching.